Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Rhythm Game Tutorial Series. Now, we've set up the ability for our notes to scroll, we can hear some music, and we can hit and miss the notes correctly based on when they reach the buttons or if they pass down too low. So with that in mind, what we can do next is add some score for hitting notes. So when we hit notes we want to get some points and if we miss them we obviously don't want to get any points. So for that we're going to add some stuff into our game manager script. Oh, I've actually I've gone ahead and added just a few more notes up above uh, here just to make it a little bit more um, obvious when we're doing stuff. Uh, so I'm going to go back to my game manager script and we're going to scroll up to the top and we're going to add a couple of more variables in up here. We're going to create a public int current score oh, can't spell score apparently public int current score and we're going to create one more int public int score per note and we're going to set this to be by default 100 and so then the basics of what we're going to do is just when we hit a note we're going to say our current score plus equals score per note so on a very basic level that's kind of all you need to do to get points. So let's switch back over and we'll make sure that this is working correctly. So once that compiles, we see we have our current score is zero, score per note is 100. So if I hit a few of these, we should see our current score go up. So as you can see, as I hit the notes and as I miss the notes, we don't get any score, but when I hit some more, our current score goes up. Okay, so that's perfect. We, we want to have that in there, but obviously we don't want to just adding a little current score over here in the corner. We want this to be something that the player can actually see. So we're gonna do that on our canvas. And we already have a canvas set up in the scene as part of your, um, part of the default settings. Uh, so I'm just gonna activate it here, uh, just to save a bit of time. All it is is two little uh, text objects down here. So we have a score text and a multiplier text. So what we want to do is, we'll, we'll talk about the multiplier in a little bit, but to start off with, we're going to set our score text to be whatever our current score is. So for that, we'll jump back into our game manager. We'll obviously need a reference to that. So down here, I'm going to create a public text for the score text. As we just saw, there's a multiplier as well that we're going to deal with in a minute. Oh, actually, I just realized. Uh, we want a public text so we we know we're using we're accessing unity's ui elements so we're using unity engine dot ui we need to remember to include that at the top so now we can correctly access the text elements of the ui and as i was about to say we saw there's a multiplier we're going to deal with it in a few minutes so we're just going to also create a public text for um we'll just say multi-text that'll do so then all we want to do is when we add score to our current score we want to say at that point the score text dot text so if we go back into unity the score text here so the text is the element we're looking at which we're calling score text and within that we're accessing this text part which is what stores the uh, bit of text to show on screen so we want to set that to be equal we want to make sure it still says score with a space and then we'll add the current score onto that so it'll be score first of all it'll be zero but then as soon as we add a point on it'll be score current score so let's save it go back into unity go to our game manager and we're going to drag the score text into that slot and we'll also put the multiplier text in there for now so we know that's already set up and now um, actually what we should make sure and do is as soon as it starts up we want to make sure that it says zero to start off with so we'll say our score text dot text equals score zero okay let's go back in here press play again there we go, we see our score immediately change to zero. If I start hitting some notes, you can see our score immediately goes up. Okay, so we're updating the score on the screen. Let's take a look at how we can 
use a multiplier to our advantage to help make the game a little bit more interesting and a little bit more fun for our players basically. So to do a multiplier it's pretty straightforward. All we have to do is first of all add some variables into our game manager. So below our score here we're going to add a public int um, current multiplier let's call it. We're going to have another int uh, public int, we'll make it public for just to make it easier to demonstrate things in the inspector, but public int multiplier tracker we'll call this. This is going to be how we keep track of when we should move up to the next multiplier level. And then for each level of our multiplier we want to make it harder to get to the next level. So we'll say public int array that we'll call multiplier thresholds like so. Okay, so how do we earn multiplier? How do we make the multiplier happen? Well, first of all, we need to make sure that our multiplier is being set to, uh, or is being used in calculating our current score. Uh, so first of all, what I'll do is make sure that our current multiplier by default is set to be one. Actually, no, we won't set it there. We'll set it in the start function. So we'll make sure our current multiplier equals one because we always want it to be able to multiply by one. We don't want our score multiplying by zero, for example. That wouldn't be very good. So then what we'll do is down here in our score per note, where we're saying current score plus equals score per note, instead of just being score per note, we're going to multiply that by our current multiplier. So it'll be multiplying by one by default. So then the next thing we'll do is when we hit a note, we're going to say our multiplier should start adding one on. And how we do that is using our multiplier tracker. So our multiplier tracker, for example, will start off at zero. When we hit, say, when we hit one note, we'll add one onto that. When we hit another one, we'll get to two. And we would say, okay, well, if we get to two, then we'll go to the next multiplier level. So we'll say, we'll hit a multiplier threshold, which we'll set to be two. Actually, Rather than making that kind of abstract, let's go ahead and set that up back in our Unity. So I'm going to save this, go back into Unity, just to make it a little bit more visual of what we're doing. So our current multiplier, we'll set it to be 1 by default. We'll leave our multiplier tracker at 0. Then we're going to have a few different thresholds here for our multiplier. And what we'll do, we'll see we'll have three thresholds here. Um, we'll make it, we'll make it uh, 4 then we want to double that four basically so we go up to eight but rather than just being eight we're going to set it to be 12 so we're adding that on and just make things nice and simple uh, so we got four 12 and then what would be double eight would be 16 so we'll add 16 onto 12 will be 28 so what we could do is multiple reset our tracker when we hit a new level but it's easier to just uh, do it like this actually would it be no you know what we'll just stick with going with eight for each one so we'll four eight and sixteen are our levels so when we first get to four what should happen is we'll add one to our multiplier so it'll become two and our tracker will get reset to zero and now we have to try and count up to eight to get to the next level so back in our game manager when we hit a note what we'll do is we're gonna first the first thing we'll do is basically add one to our multiplier tracker so multiplier tracker plus plus and then what we're going to do is check and see if our multiplier tracker has passed any of those threshold values that we've set up so we know that for example we start off with our current multiplier is one and we want to check if we get to four so we would want to check the position at element zero so if our multiplier is one and we want to look at zero we'd have to take away one from our current multiplier basically so we'll go back in here what we're going to do is check if in our multiplier threshold array so that's our selection of thresholds the position we want to look at is whatever our current multiplier is minus one so we want to start off looking at position zero and we're looking at that and checking if that is um less than or equal to whatever our multiplier tracker currently is so if our multiplier tracker, so we know we have a four. If our multiplier tracker gets is at three, 
well then none of this will happen because you know this isn't less than or equal to that but if our tracker gets to four then at that point we will go okay well first of all set our tracker back to be zero so it's zero and add one on to our current multiplier so current multiplier plus plus and there's one extra little check we need to do here just to make sure that nothing weird happens which is we want to make sure that we never go past the length of this so at the moment we're basically saying hey we can get a multiplier up to four because we could go we start off at one at this point we'd have two at this point we'd have three and at this point we'd have four but then our current multiplier will be four but there's no position three here in the thresholds array for it to check so to make sure that that doesn't happen what we'll do is uh, we're going to wrap an if statement around this we're just going to say if our current multiplier minus one is less than multiplier thresholds dot length so we'll put then curly brackets around all this multiplier stuff like this and what this does is say hey if our current multiplier minus one so the maximum it can get to is three so our multiplier is four we take away one that's three as if that is less than our threshold's length well our threshold's length is three so then at this point we would say hey our multiplier is three that is definitely not less than this one so in that case don't do any of this stuff so we're we're no longer looking at this multiplier then and uh, nothing weird can happen we won't get any uh, array index errors so with that in mind then uh, we're we're updating our multiplier and everything is working perfectly fine so let's go ahead and test this out so go back into unity once it compiles we'll just keep an eye on our multiplier tracker here and our current multiplier so if I hit play and if I hit a few notes you can see our multiplier is going up the way it should be and we're up to three so it's working perfectly fine we're just not updating the value on screen so let's go ahead and do that so when we get our multiplier we're going to say our multi-text that we've already already set up multi-text dot text equals multiplier uh, times and then we're going to add on whatever our current multiplier is like so okay so that's all fine and dandy that'll that'll demonstrate on screen actually let's just show that in action if we hit play here let it compile hit a few of these notes you can see our multiplier now is changing on the screen the way we want it to so that's perfectly fine but the other thing is if I play this again if we get up to a multiplier of two what we really want to happen then is if I miss a note we want it to uh, reset our multiplier because I missed the note we lost the, the combo we had going so for that all we have to do then is in our note missed here when we miss a note we want to reset our multiplier so we'll just say our current multiplier is equal to one and our multiplier tracker is equal to zero and then we're going to make sure we update the multiplier text so we're just going to copy and paste this bit of code paste it in there like that and we'll save it go back into unity and if we play once it's compiled I hit a few of these so you can see my multiplier is now correct but if I miss a note our multiplier goes back down to one so perfect we've got a nice score system working in the game now so what we can do next is start looking at how we can detect when we actually do a good or a bad hit on our buttons.